Hello and welcome to the final pre-overhaul nuclear craft update video version 2.18. We're finally here. I've just done like four in a row. It's absolutely fantastic and I can finally get on with some other stuff. Um, this is the final major update for the uh, for nuclear craft before the overhaul. Uh, the overhaul, as I said before, is being worked on and uh, don't know how long it's going to take for you know particular features to be added. I hope to get the new uh, solid fuel reactors done. Uh, by Tuesday next week because that's where I'm going away uh, but hopefully it's done before then so that I can get that out and people can play with it and then you know other stuff will get added at some point in the future after that um, so let's go back to this uh, 2.18 uh, the first thing that got added which uh, is a pretty big deal actually is a uh, side configurations for machines this is something that needs to be added for so long um, but it's finally in now actually what I'm going to do I think now that I think about it um, I'm probably going to uh, get uh, a machine that takes both items and fluids. So I suppose something like that maybe the infuser would be a good idea. So um, or maybe let's get let's get a couple of machines. So the electrolyzer for a start would be something we can look at, which has got multiple outputs, which is something that people want to deal with. And uh, we also want to uh, or maybe the centrifuge because it's not quite as slow as the electrolyzer is. And let's also get uh, the infuser because it has fluids and uh, and items. Um, so these two things, James Bond. Nice, that's probably the centrifuge. Uh, yeah, it is the centrifuge. Um, if anyone gets that reference, then uh, you're a legend. Uh, anyway, um, let's get a capacitor to get some power flowing through these things. Uh, let's put these down just here, I suppose. Um, so let's let's do the, uh, the centrifuge first. So the centrifuge uh, takes in one fluid and outputs four. Um, there's, a, there's a horrible fly flying around my desktop here. Let me just, uh, it's fine, I'll get rid of it. I'm, I'm Flailing my arm, I can't get it. Never mind, it's flown away. Um, okay, so the let's let's do something like let's have a look at something that like requires quite a lot of different fluids. Let's do molten depleted HECF. So molten depleted, cool LU two three three. That will do. Okay, so that's a big mess of stuff. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a tank of this stuff. So tank, and let's put it like I don't know here. Boom. Um, and let's first of all turn all of the side configurations off. So the way side configurations work is you go into this thing and uh, each of the different slots and tanks have their own configuration. So by default, the inputs will accept from any side, the outputs will um, push on any side, and uh, the upgrades will accept from any side as well. So uh, the first thing is inputs. Um, you can do the sort of thing you can do in thermal expansion. So if you hold down shift or control, and, uh, and left click, you will disable everything. If you hold shift or control and right click, you will go to the default. Um, so that's those normal uh, thermal expansion -y type uh, settings. And then also you can click on the individual ones to uh, to reset them or whatever. So blah, 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 blah. Um, So input slots and tanks can be in output mode, input mode or disabled, and output slots can be in disabled or output mode. And again, same with the outputs, you can um, Sh uh, shift uh, click the middle or shift right click to uh, oh I just uh, oh up in there there we go sorry I accidentally went out of the window there by accident never mind let's start with the input mode let's disable everything in uh, everywhere so that nothing connects so hopefully when I do this I'm not going to worry about upgrades hopefully when I put a duct next to this thing let's get a duct a fluid duct um, where's fluid duct no, that's item duct fluid duct so hopefully this will not connect. So you can see that because I've disabled everything, there's no fluid connections going on. And so that, that pipe doesn't know what to do. Um, so the first thing I can do, let's fill this thing up with loads and loads of, well, okay, maybe not quite as much. I didn't realize this tank was uh, annoying like that, but there we are. Okay, we've got one bucket of it. That should be enough for this demonstration. Um, so first of all, if we go into side configuration and open up this, um, you can see I can modify all these and nothing will happen because it's not the right side. So... Uh, let's get uh, rid of all these and turn on left. So this is that side there. Left, enabled, input, and you can see the side connects now. Um, so let's actually get a servo and pull this thing in. Um, like this. Whoop. Boom. And uh, that should go in there. It's actually starting to process. I didn't really want that. Let's uh, t disable this quickly with a lever. Uh, lever. And disable this briefly. Okay, turn that off. And uh, that will stop and the fuel's in there. Now I can actually um, pull this out again by using a different bunch of uh, ducts around the back. So let's uh, turn this uh, turn this off for a bit um, and instead uh, do some uh, pulling out the back. So let's uh, output out the back. So you can see when I do this, um, let's actually uh, put it into input mode and you'll see when it's in input mode, the servo 
will not pull. Um, the server will not pull anything um, at all. But if I go into output mode, you can see it now comes out. It goes back into the tank. There we are. It's pretty cool. And uh, I can, of course, pull this back in on that side. So now the depleted LU 233 fuel is in there. And uh, now what I want to do is, this is the bit that uh, used to be really difficult with uh, multiple outputs. I can now uh, output uh, to different sides depending on the tank that I have. So, for example, I might want um, the uh, first output, let's, let's go to all this, I might want the first output to go to the left, the second output to go to the right, th third one behind, and the fourth one in front. So let's do that by splitting this up. And this means you don't have to do any more filtering before you've... Uh, doesn't mean you have, it means you don't have to do any filtering basically you can just uh s oh actually i've accidentally uh, i've accidentally uh output stuff and i Hang on, let's let's get rid of this uh pull that back in and uh put this back side into input mode there you go and disable it again okay so now i want to put um the first one let's have that on the left so output on the left second one output on the right say uh third one output behind and fourth one output through the front. Oh, that's top, front, boom. Okay, so now that should all be set up. So we should have the different isotopes of the fluids going out in different sides once we start pulling. So let's turn these all on. Let's go into that. Turn these all on. Um, and I think I'm probably gonna need to put these into ignore mode just to make sure that they stay on when I turn the lever off. I can turn it off like that, and now as this thing starts to get going, I'll put some speed upgrades in there to speed up a little bit, boom and boom, and there we go, it's processing, and there we go, it's already done, because that went pretty fast, and you can see, oh my goodness, what we got going on here, I think, if you hover over them, they're not rendering very well in these tanks, these advanced rocketry tanks, but you can see here we've got americium-243, plutonium-239, plutonium-242, and plutonium-241, and they all haven't got mixed up or anything, they've all come out the right side, and uh, obviously that's really useful for when you're doing uh, sorting of fluids out of the machines. So they won't auto push, the machines will not auto push out the sides that they're configured to push to, um, but you can now pull um, out the sides that you want to by configuring them correctly. So that's obviously very useful. Um, you can obviously also do the same for items, so let's put down this infuser now. Uh, let's get rid of all this, infuser, so let's do an infuser recipe, let's do oxygen. So oxygen, uh, let's get some oxygen, and let's get a let's get a better tank than this. That, that tank was really annoying to use. Uh, tank. Let's get a, uh, a mechanism tank. There you go. And let's put this down. Put loads of oxygen in there. And uh, let's first of all pull this in on uh, on this side. So let's uh, just demonstrate that again. You can, if it's disabled, then it won't uh, export. So let's get a, a duct. Pull. You can see it's not going anywhere. If I put this into, oh, put this into uh, output mode, it still won't come in. If I put it into input mode, then it will come in. There we go. And uh, there we are. It's in the input tank. There's the oxygen. And then I can do the same with items. So let's have, for example, just a hopper on the top here as an example. Put hopper on the top. Let's uh, disable everything. Uh, hopper on the top. And let's put some uranium up there. Uranium ingots. Boom. You can see they're not going in. If I put it into uh, into output mode, still it's not on. As soon as I put it into input mode, the machine turns on because the uranium's coming down. And uh, I can also pull out the uh, pull out the sides that I want to. So if for some reason I wanted to configure it so that um, only this side interacted, I've got it in output mode, and I can have uh, my item duct. Let's get an item duct pulling. There we are, and a chest pulling out. Boom, 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 servo, and that should be pulling out my, uh, once it's done, should pull out my uranium oxide ingot, and there we are. So that is how you set up uh, side configurations. I hope that was an example that basically demonstrated how it works. Um, you basically just uh, configure which side things can be inputted from or outputted to. It won't auto-pull or push, but it just means that uh, sorting out multiple outputs in particular is much less of a hassle. So that is uh, pretty much the end of the story. For side configuration, um, finally it is in. It should have been in a long time ago, but it was just a bit of a pain in the ass and I didn't want to until now. Um, so there we go, that is uh, that. Is that. Uh, added animation render for turbine rotors. So if we head over here, um, you've already seen this before in the other update videos, but um, 
uh, turbines will now have a, an animated render. So you can see the stators are just uh, fixed in place, but the actual turbine bits, the actual blade bits, are uh, are rotating. And it also has a sound effect as well. Um, if you walk up to it, um, this thing is a bit quieter than this one. Uh, the way that the sound effect actually works is that it actually plays every sort of eight blocks of the machine um, on the on the face of the turbine. Now the reason this thing is incredibly loud is because this thing happens to have a 6x6x6 six 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 interior which means that the sounds are playing in every corner of this turbine so that's why it sounds like much louder than this one over here so that's just sort of luck of the draw um, but um, hopefully the noise being generated by the turbine roughly reflects how big it is um, and actually what will happen is as the turbine sort of spins up and gets faster the uh, pitch of the turbine noise will actually get higher and higher which should be pretty cool. Um, but I don't want to disturb this system, so I'll just leave it as it is. Um, fusion reactors have a new sound effect as well. I think you already heard this in an older video as well. This thing uh, has a new sound effect, so it no longer has that sort of weird sound effect that sort of had that glitchy um, noise that happened whenever the sound effect was sort of uh, repeating. Um, I'm using a Mechanism, thanks to the Mechanism devs, for their sound system. I'm using their Tile Entity sound system. Uh, their logic for making sure the sound sort of plays smoothly um, after one another instead of having that sort of horrible flickering noise that used to happen whenever the sound replayed. Um, you, I think you'll agree that it works quite nicely, it sounds quite smooth and nice. Um, this, These two sound effects are actually uh, stolen from uh, Mist Exile, um, which uh, Cyan now owns actually because they, uh, they got it back off Presto or Ubisoft, I think Presto doesn't exist anymore, they got it back off Ubisoft which is obviously fantastic because I love Cyan. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm using uh, the sounds from that game, Voltaic, the Age of Voltaic in particular, if you've ever played Mist Exile. You'll remember there's all sorts of different mechanical sound effects going on in that game. Um, so I think this is the sound effect that plays uh, near the end of the, of the age where you uh, get the Mist Book in the uh, big swirly, uh, swirly levitating area of electromagnetism. Uh, you, you'll only know what I'm talking about if you've played the game. <laughs> Um, and there we are, so that's uh, that's that, those sound effects, new sound effects. Um, fusion reactors, yes, done that. Fixed array, uh, oh, so yes, a fixed array returning OC methods, not respecting Lua's multi-output protocol. So the way I didn't realize that, so when you add open computers uh, integration to machines, um, the actual output style is an array of objects, and I didn't realize that in Lua, uh, unlike Java, um, one method can, out can output multiple values. So in Java, normally what you do if you wanted multiple values, you'd make a new object that sort of contained multiple values. But in Lua, you can actually just you can literally just um, you can literally just uh, print uh, return multiple values. And I thought that uh, I didn't realize that that was why you could return an array. So what used to happen sometimes if you uh, were trying to make a program that you say the reactor structure, which returns an array of information, it wouldn't pr work properly because I thought that I had to return the array that um, I was you know, being given to return, rather than actually making one of the elements of the array, the array that I was returning, if you get what I mean. Um, so that's all been fixed now. Um, Geiger counter blocks will now output a comparator signal of strength relative to the logarithm of the chunk radiation. So yes, um, there's a comparator signal, but because obviously radiation can vary quite quite a lot from, uh, you know, different scales, um, this ha this is a logarithmic output. So so uh, you take the uh, the uh, base 10 logarithm. Uh, the maximum output uh, by default, you can configure this, is um, a power, a redstone power of 15 at 1 kilorad per tick. So anything above 1 kilorad per tick will just output power 15. So we can roughly work out what the, uh, what the, what the uh, radiation level is just from this redstone signal. So if 1 kilorad is 15, that means that 100 millirads is 14. 10 millirads, and if we look at this, you can see it's 84 millirads. Oh, what? I must have got that wrong. Yes, I did get it wrong, didn't I? Because I went from kilo straight to milli. What a terrible example that was. So yes, ki kilo is 15, 100 is 14, 10 is 13, 1 is 12, 100 milli is 11, 10 milli is 10. There we go. So somewhere between 10 and 100 millirads. Boom. Okay. Good. Okay, I really confused myself there for a second. And then the final thing, 
is uh, added a config to disable mechanism gas support. So yes, some people um, like the mechanism gases to be separated from fluids, and so if you don't want nuclear craft to have this sort of auto conversion of gas to fluid and fluid to gas, um, then you can disable that in the configs if you're making a pack where you don't want that to happen, for example. And that is, I believe, absolutely everything. We've finally done every single update video um, for the pre-overhaul. And uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, in the last, uh, I should mention actually, this is very important that I mention this, um, in the, I think in the version 2.13 video, um, some, some, and also some people private messaged me on Discord about this, um, that uh, Australia was smashing England in the ashes. I think you'll find that it's one all. Thank you very much. We, uh, we pulled off uh, an impossible victory uh, a couple of days ago. Um, but I just, I just had to mention that because you know it needs to be you know we need to make sure that we we have things straight. Um, but other than that, we can now draw a line under Nuclearcraft pre-overhaul in terms of the uh, update videos. Um, hopefully, you're all looking forward to the new stuff coming in the overhaul. Uh, as I say, we'll uh, we'll have some videos on that it's at some point when when things uh, start to get moving. Uh, join the Nuclearcraft Discord server for uh, slightly more intricate information, and I'll be updating it a little bit more regularly there than on YouTube um, about what's going on. And uh, feel free to ask any questions as usual in the comments or in the server. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video, whichever one we make. It might be a fission uh, reprocessing tutorial or something. Who knows? It will be something like that. Um, but until then, uh, have a good one and uh, see you later.